Welcome to the School of Professional Design. I'm Donnie Tuttle, your guide to aligning your work with your unique professional design. I'm a professor at the School of Professional Design, and I am here to help you to unlock the professional life that you love and loves you back. So let's get out of the grind and play by your design. In this session of School of Professional Design's audio experience, we are talking about the Jester. These people are freaking awesome. Everyone loves a Jester. And one of the people that I, it just comes to mind when I think of a Jester is probably the ultimate, the pinnacle of all Jesters, Robin Williams. Robin Williams was a comedian and an actor who was known for his ability to ad-lib, to literally take what was created by writers, directors, and producers and make something brand new. They realized that he wasn't best if you gave him all of the lines of what to say. He wasn't best if he was told who to be as a method actor. He was best if you just told him the direction we're going and let him figure it out. His mind was like a crazy ping pong ball bouncing from one thing to another, connecting words, connecting ideas, connecting people, places, and things that most people would never put together. That is the power of the innovator that we call the, the jester. He didn't win like everyone else. This guy won through his ability to innovate in craft a new explanation or a new storyline. And that is exactly how the jester wins. If you try to lock these guys up, put cuffs on them, if you try to restrict them, they are going to, they're going to struggle when you let them breathe, when you let them create, when you let them invent. Boy, there is boundless, boundless energy. If you look at what they are, I, I believe, so we've, we've created four different essential personalities in business and professionalism, and there are pioneers, visionaries, strategists, and connectors. The pioneers are the ones that are going to go out there and do something different, find a new way. That's the pioneers. They usually are following the vision of the visionaries, the creation of the visionaries. And then whatever it is that they do gets put into a structure by the strategists. And when, with that, it's given a company corporate form through the connectors. So all of these things need to work together. The jester is a pioneer. The jester finds new things. Now, there's a few different types of pioneers. We have the jester, we have the rebel, and we have the explorer. And they're all a little bit different. The rebel, they, they are doing things that are different because they're challenging authority. They're breaking the rules. But the jester is just using humor and playfulness to encourage new perspectives, to be alive in the moment. The explorer, the other type of pioneer, well, they're seeking new experiences and adventures. The jester... They're just finding joy in the present moment. And sometimes they don't even need to be in a different place. Their creativity can create something new out of something old. So all pioneers share a focus on innovation, creativity, energy, challenging conventional thinking. But the jester, what a special person. The jester is characterized by playfulness, spontaneity. They, they're alive in the moment. Obviously, from the name, they're humorous. They thrive on bringing joy and laughter to those around them. They often are characterized by wit and creativity. And that's what they challenge the status quo with. And when they challenge the status quo, their whole thing is to inspire. They want to lighten the load. They want to make people get elevated, elevate them past what they're seeing and into something that is altered in a way. We just see things differently. 
when we see it with joy. So the tendencies of the gesture is to be playful, to be spontaneous. They're, they're going to challenge the status quo. They're going to use humor. It's joy that they want for themselves and the others. They're alive in the moment. They dance in the rain. And they're most alive. They feel like they are on when they're winging it. They want the spotlight. Look at me, baby. They will wear loud clothes. They will use loud voices. They will do wild and crazy things that would make so many of us cringe. They improvise. They innovate. These are people that belong in our professional world. And without them, without them, it would be just such a boring place sometimes. They make dry things colorful. The perfect metaphor, I guess, is literally the name of a jester. The court jester, right? They're sitting there next to the king, subtly challenging the king's perspectives. See, a jester wasn't just there juggling balls and, and making jokes. The jester was there in the king's court to challenge their perspective. They're literally, in a lot of, in a lot of times in stories and myths, they were the only ones that had the ability and the right to speak to the king in a way that might not be respectful. They challenged the royal perspective. And their wit, their humor, sometimes their mockery could challenge even a king to see things in a new light. Playful antics create something new Again, from something mundane. In history, you're going to find that Charlie Chaplin, the comedic genius, there's so many geniuses that are out there. Fictionally, this is, this is the genie in Aladdin would be there. If you're, if you're looking for an icon in business, look to Richard Branson, the founder of Virgin Group and so many things. He was known for his playful and unconventional business approach. It was, uh, he would have his meetings in his home in places that just seemed goofy. And when highfalutin business people would show up for a meeting trying to buy or sell or have a meeting, or, he would get out the scissors and cut their ties off. Fun was what empowered people to see things differently. And of course, if you look at the branding of any of the Virgin uh, labels, Really, it embraced fun and it embraced something that challenged the status quo. The motivations of the gesture, it's fun. It's, it's being in the moment. There is an element of impressing others. Somewhere deep inside, a desire for acceptance. And sometimes, in some ways, maybe an, an over effort, right? And, and uh, an accelerated effort to try to gain acceptance. They want that simple agreement. They want that laugh. They want, they want attention. They do desire to bring joy and laughter. Oftentimes, if they're honest, it's not really about other people. It's about themselves. In terms of how they view pleasure, they, they gain pleasure by doing things for themselves. They're very sensing and sensual. They, they know when they're, when they're happy, when they're not. They are oftentimes, they can be manic, actually. High highs and low lows, partly because of the courage that it takes to bring a new idea or a new thought out. And, and don't only think of gestures as, ha ha, this is a funny thing. Sometimes it's just bringing out something new that's contrary, that's different, that's mixing old things into a new recipe. Oftentimes, uh, I, I will say that it, it's energy. It's energy that lights these guys up. That's, that's what they want. And in terms of fear, boy, they are going to run for the hills from things that lack energy. They're afraid of rejection. They don't want people to tell them how bad they are. That being said, it's also sometimes hard for them to receive criticism. So if you're a jester, maybe that's something you might want to know about yourself and then work on that. 
Jester is afraid of boredom. So they always have to constantly have something going. If, if something doesn't excite the Jester, they'll check out. And so, again, Jester, you might need to learn how to pay attention. Jesters may be afraid of wasting their life away. And actually, that is a tendency because oftentimes they're going from one thing to another, to another, to another, and they, they don't get great depth by their nature. They're like bumblebees floating back and forth, pollinating the different flowers. <laughs> Whatever's bright is where they're going. They fear details. They fear organization. They fear having to do chores of any type, grown up or childlike chores. They don't want to be mocked. Now, I will say this, they're sharp tongued. So if you give it to them, they'll probably give it back to you times five. So sometimes they may want to be mocked so they can, can really just, you know, bring out complete humor and they'll probably destroy you. They're, they're, they're not going to be merciful if you haven't been that way to them. They don't want to be seen as irrelevant or unimportant. They, they don't, again, it, it is, it is the rejection. They, the, if they fail to bring joy and laughter, it's almost like they fail in their role. And so that can be discouraging for some conformity and seriousness. Boy, if I've got to be like everyone else, if I've got to be serious, ain't going to work. Ain't going to work. So strengths, energy, energy, energy. If you have someone to present something, if you have someone that you want to pump up the crowd, they're going to bring the energy. If you want people to feel excited, let the jester speak. Let them speak. They are all about energy. They're all about it because that's what they have. They're about inspiration. They're about exceptional creativity and humor. They're about a different viewpoint about challenging perspectives. Some, oftentimes, I think really in a non-threatening way, because when you can challenge a perspective with a laugh, it removes the threat. And it's almost like they can say the thing that might sting if, if that uh, hero or the ruler or the sage said it. It might seem mean coming from them, but it doesn't when it comes from the jester. The Love bringing the joy and the positivity in the workplace. Some of the blind spots, me, uh, I would say, is you may lack seriousness or depth. You may struggle with routine and consistency. And for good reason. I'm not, I'm not saying that you need to always have it, but you need to have some. You might not be ambitious. Sometimes you only want what the moment offers. And so you sacrifice tomorrow for the fun of today. Jesters typically focus on themselves. Jesters, their need to be liked can make them invisible sometimes. They come across as hungry or desperate for attention and, and it can be a turn off for the rest of us. That a jester sometimes fulfills, I'm not saying that this is who you are, but sometimes people rely on you for the comic relief and the funniness or the fun or whatever. Sometimes that can remove respect. So that when people need to hear and understand that you know a lot, and you probably do know a lot, jesters tend to be very, like, they learn quickly, and so they know a lot of things. That's like a part of what they do. They, they build up their mental library, usually so they can, they can drop a line or a joke or, or some new inspiring or different inflected thing. And so you, you know a lot, but you might have a hard time getting respect. You may risk being underestimated and you might be more moved to break the rules. It might not, that might not mean the same to you. And if you're hiring a jester, just, just know that, give them, give them the boundaries. If you're a jester, you probably can do a lot of things because you have a high learning ability, but go hire a nerd, go hire a boss. You need someone that's going to pay attention to the details, that's going to do your accounting, that's going to follow after the boring stuff. And you definitely need someone to give you structure that you either don't like or you find boring or too restrictive. Listen, if you can, 
get someone else to do that. Like this is, that's not your bread and butter. And I'm not saying that you can't be persistent. I'm just saying that it's not one of your activators, new and fun and novel. That's what you want. So maybe for the things that require persistent activity that you find drudgery, go hire the hero archetype. Go bring someone in who can run through a wall over and over and over again without uh, getting bored of it. That's not you. If you were to function in a business, I would say the most native business functions you can have would be marketing and advertising. Why? Because it's fun and fun attracts. I would say creative development and brainstorming because you keep the load light. You keep us from getting bogged down in all of the serious gunk. Helping maintain engagement, employee morale, those type of things, whatever, wherever, wherever fun can be. And by the way, fun can get into every part of anyone's world if you want to, uh, to do it that way. If you don't believe me, look at the minor league baseball team called the Savannah Bananas. It's a hundred percent jester. Everything they do is to, they say they, they have, uh, it's almost like there were a carnival or a circus or a party and a baseball game happened to break out. It's a minor league baseball team and, and they just want to make everything fun. Everything. I would say the Jesters are really good at connecting to new people. If you want new relationships, get Jester. They will get attention. They know how to get attention. And they can advise on the client journey. If, if a Jester tunes out on something, they typically have the shortest attention spans out of all of the archetypes. If they tune out, that means your presentation is too long or too boring or find a way to simplify. Jesters speak in the language of simplicity. And that's like the genius of it. There's an elegance to it. Here is how you can change things up. So if you're a jester and you've listened this far, you probably haven't listened this far because we're 18 minutes into the podcast and you know, I probably should have made this like the five minute podcast, but you need this. It's about you. Here's how you can manage time differently. Improvise. Leave time open for improvisation. Put yourself in front of something where you have to figure it out. It's going to make you come alive. Make things a game. Okay, so if you have mundane tasks, how fast can you get the task done? How accurate can you get the task done? Can you chase someone else? Can you beat someone else? Make it a game. And that can be things that you have to get done or it can be the things that you don't really want to do. I will say that you are usually typically going to try to avoid difficult tasks. And we'll get into that in a moment, but I, I would say get a partner, get a manager, get someone to help you to stay on track and not stop when it gets tough. Uh, I would say for time, break tasks into fun and engaging activities. You're the ADHD person, so keep it fun. And I'm, I'm using that humorously. I'm not saying you actually have ADHD. Okay. So don't go around telling people that use humor as much as you can. Don't lock it out. Do not try to stay serious. If you're a jester, don't walk around trying to act like a fighter. Sometimes a jester can master, masquerade as a fighter because they seem aggressive and willing to talk to people. Sometimes the jester can, can masquerade or, or wear the persona of the lover because they seem to be magnetic and attractive and care for people. But really, a lover does things. It's really for the other people. The jester is really just doing it for themselves. That's how it's making them feel. How should you manage relationships differently? Learn to be interested, not just interesting. Learn to listen. Learn to slow down sometimes. Use a different varieties of, of, use vocal variety. If you're always excited about things, we all start to question your, are you being genuine? I will tell you, a lot of people do question your genuineness and try to feel things when you're going through it. Be, be a feeler. I know you do feel. Express the feeling sometimes. Slow down. Find new relationships. I think you are going to thrive when you find new relationships. Find the good ones. Go to the places to where it, you're going to add to them, but they're going to add to you. Not just the places where you think you can get accepted. How do you manage your productivity differently? I would say... You should do end of day or end of task framing where when something may seem difficult, maybe, maybe it didn't turn out as good as you wanted it to, 
don't be so critical. Use your humor to overcome the challenges and setbacks by framing it. So instead of saying, oh, we only got 10 visitors, just say, oh, wow, we got 10 visitors. Woo you know, and, and, and don't do it in a way that belittles. Do it in a way that, 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 that causes a good feeling. Laugh. Laugh, 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 laugh. For you to have a sense of purpose, I would just say, reinforce the value of your playful and innovative approach. Find people you can laugh with and not at, okay? Find a way to give your joy to others, and not just yourself. And again, just, just bring, bring you, bring you. You're fun. We love you. We love you. We, you know we do. How do you avoid misunderstanding? Be open to feedback. Be willing to adapt. Be willing to be clear with your intentions. I know sometimes you may not like conflict. That's something you probably don't like. And I would say, don't, if you use humor with conflict, it's going to sound really bad. It's going to sound snarky or very, it's just like that. It's just like a weird, critical type of a, it, it's a, just, just don't do it. Okay. Humor is not appropriate all of the time. Your, the things that you should outsource to others, I would say details, outsource details, outsource projects, outsource routine and repetitive tasks. Okay. Anything that's detailed, any project management, logistics, any, any, any of those things, anything that's highly technical. Okay. If you can, if not stay with it. Okay. If you were a company, by the way, I meant to mention this earlier, you probably would look like old spice, <laughs> how they use humor and creativity might look like Wendy's. Have you ever seen their, their Twitter page? It's, it's pretty much all full of burns and, and cut downs, but whatever you do, I'm going to ask you to do this. Don't hide the fun. Don't try for respect at the expense of your gift. We need it. We need it. And if you are able Yes, listen, learn from others, imitate others, then innovate. Bring your power onto the planet. Bring your willingness to be spontaneous. Bring your, your willingness to go find new things. Bring your willingness to go against the status quo. Bring the wing in it. <laughs> Bring your improvisation. Bring it. We need it. You be you, my friend. My hope is to encourage you to look, to think. You be you, my friend. Take that gift, shine it up, bring it to the world because we need your magic. Before you go, I have a question for you. Are you tired of feeling like you're just not effective, like you know there's something more in you? Listen, you're not weird, you're just alone. And we all need someone to simplify things. That's exactly what I do for free in the powerful Peak Performance Masterclass. And I'm inviting you right now to go to schoolofprofessionaldesign.com forward slash now, and I'll show you how to generate peak performance from your unique identity, how to create unstoppable vision and take bold action. Start bringing 100% of yourself into your life and make your life your master work. I'll see you there. It's free schoolofprofessionaldesign.com forward slash now.